GearNetwork.com. The following is a presentation of the Gear Radio Network. This is AC Slade, and you're listening to the All Bets Are Off podcast with Robbie Vegas. What's up, Rock Soldiers? This is the rock star Robbie Vegas coming at you with another episode of the All Bets Are Off podcast. As always, new and fresh and happy to be here. So I do want to remind you guys to please subscribe to the All Bets Are Off podcast. Rate it, review it. It helps us pop up when people are searching for new podcasts and, uh, you know, it'll help keep us going. So uh, you you guys know that I always ask you to do that. Follow us on all social media at Pod. And, uh, of course, check out my Pro Wrestling Tea store. Just go to ProWrestlingTees.com, Rockstar Robbie Vegas. So today, as you have already seen from the title of the show, we have Virus on the show. Andre is the guitarist of Dope, but he has also done an insane amount of other work that you guys will probably know him from. And if not, then we have some stuff for you to check out. Dope is one of my favorite bands. As you guys know, we already had AC Slade on and uh, one of my favorite live shows. I've talked about it many times um, in the last year when we have musicians on who have, you know, played with Dope or shared a stage with them and whatnot. So uh, he's got a really cool story. Rochester, New York native, which are uh, my stomping grounds for upstate professional wrestling, which was really cool to learn and hear about. So before we get into that interview, I do want to let you know that for the second week in a row, we are sponsored by Away Travel. So this episode is brought to you by Away Travel. Quite simply, Away makes everything you need for a trip away. Away started with a perfect suitcase, then built from there, creating a range of travel standards developed from the travel stories of friends and seatmates. The pieces aren't smart, they're thoughtful with features that solve real travel problems. To give the whole world access to better travel standards, Away took the direct-to-customer approach to lower prices and the quality is guaranteed. Your Away suitcase will be with you for life. We're teaming up with Away and Podgo to give you the best deal on premium luggage by going to podgo.co slash away. That's podgo.co slash away. Away travel. Here to make your journey seamless. What a fitting sponsor, once again, because of course, for all you rock and rollers out there who are on the go traveling and uh, doing big things with your music, this is a big thing for you. So let's not waste any more time and uh, let's get Virus on the phone. All right, so the first thing I have to do before we even get started is just say thank you. I am a big fan, so this is really cool for me, man. This is going to be cool for me too, man. I'm uh, I'm glad that you're a fan. That that uh, makes me happy, you know. Well, I appreciate you saying that. And uh, as a Rochester native, I spent a lot of time in the same places that you have. So uh, pretty cool to have you on for that too. Yeah, I'll be share uh, some uh, some same uh, acquaintances and business people. So uh, yeah, man, it's all good. Well, let's uh, try and take it back as far as we possibly can. And uh, can you tell me what are some of your earliest memories of just being into music in general? Well, I know what got me here, which was, you know, my mom playing records and me just uh, really being curious about the music and why it made me feel a certain way. So, I, you know, I took violin as a kid and that was cool. But then when I switched to guitar, um, I just really felt like that was something that I needed to do forever and the rest of my life. So I just, uh, I've been doing that ever since. I really haven't done anything different. I just play guitar um, and I just wanted to play guitar for money and uh, make a living at it and uh, kind of busted my ass too, I must say. And uh, so here I am. I'm just, you know, I feel like I'm a teenager trapped in a 52 year old body. <laughs> I swear, man, I forget how old I am. You know, well, yeah, you've you've been doing it your your entire life. So how you know I can I can understand how that must feel, 
um, and the time probably flies by because you're on the road all the time. You've played with so many people. Yeah, I've been pretty busy, and I'm really grateful to have the work. Um, obviously, last year was uh, pretty bad, and uh, we're still feeling it. You know, nobody's out there. Um, I've been doing a couple of my uh, not your typical acoustic shows uh, here and there, playing locally. But, you know, not as much as I should be. So everything's been shut down, as you know. You're probably not working either, right? Nope. No gigs, no wrestling for me for uh, a year now. Yep. Yeah. So, you know, hopefully uh, in the spring, when there's a lot of people vaccinated by then, I think things will be opened up a little bit more. But definitely by fall, we should be in a good spot. Now, uh, I'm going to jump the gun a little bit since we're talking about the pandemic right now. But is there already plans to get back on the road by fall? Or is that just something that you're hoping for? Well, I know for uh, my band, like we go to Russia and Ukraine, sometimes we'll stop in London. We do that every year, every fall, every November, just about. So I know that's still in the books and hasn't been touched. But uh, all the stuff that was supposed to happen this year, obviously, you know, got pushed back to the spring. And then, you know, spring is right around the corner. So that's not happening. So everything's been pushed back. So I'm thinking 2021 for the dope stuff, you know, the tours and stuff. And we're looking at that, but yeah, like things just keep getting pushed back. But I'm thinking that Russian tour in the fall should still be on. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Just, you know, jumping back to what you said at first, your, your mom got you into music. Now, when that happened, was it immediately rock and roll or did you get into that on your own? Well, you know, growing, I was a teen in the eighties. So that's when I, you know, discovered you know, metal and Motley Crue and all that stuff. So, but before that, I was, you know, I was a fan of like Elvis, uh, the Carpenters, Elton John, Billy Joel. That's really what I was into. And, you know, till this day, they, they're still my favorites. You know, I, I that's still my favorite music. Uh, singer, songwriter uh, stuff from the 70s is still my first love and always will be. You know, metal, obviously, I've made a career out of it. But, you know, I, that's why I enjoy my acoustic show so much. Um, if anybody's listening and they want to check it out, just go to my Instagram, Andre Virus Caracos, and uh, check out my Not Your a Typical Acoustic Show. It's a hashtag. But that's what I enjoy the most. I get to do acoustic guitar. I get to sing. And just I get to do music that I love. And then, of course, I do some weird mashups and some modern stuff. So I just love it, man. It's, it's def- definitely still my first love. That's cool, though. And it's got to throw people off, too, because you probably get a lot of people who don't expect you to be so into that form of rock and roll. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's 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 kind of humorous because, um, you know, I get the, you know, the dope fans that show up to those shows and they're like, play dope. <laughs> or they're like, or they're like, play a Lords of Acid song or uh, play some device. And like, I'm like, well. I'm not really doing that tonight. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so, you know, and then I, I'll play them a Duran Duran medley and they're like, oh. <laughs> but I'm telling you, though, they sing along and uh, they laugh and, and uh, they enjoy themselves. And, uh, you know, that's, that's what's important at the end of the day, you know. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, I, I'll say this. I've said this on my show a handful of times that, you know, metalheads and, and like diehard rock and roll fans, they love that stuff. But a lot of times they feel like they can't be like open about it because it's just not <laughs> metal enough, you know. And then like if you hear it, you're like, oh, I love this song. And you just can't help but be like, hey, I see you nodding your head over there, man. Like you like it, too. <laughs> Dude, you're, you're doing my stage raps right now. You're totally doing what I do. Like <laughs> I'll, I'll do the I'll do. Uh, OK, so. uh who likes some '90s music? Everybody's like, "Yeah," and uh, then I'll do a Backstreet Boys medley. <laughs> and then after it's done, I'm like, "Don't lie, I saw y'all singing." <laughs> right, absolutely. You know what I mean? But uh, yeah, like so. That's kind of like the vibe of the show. It's a, it's a lot of fun. I do a couple. You know, I do. I scatter in the the modern stuff, and of course, I have to do like the stupid. Like, um, I have to do the Wonder Wall bullshit but uh yeah, yeah of course but you know what i'm gonna give you one verse of uh wonder wall and then i'm done i'm out <laughs> you know what i mean i yeah. refuse to do like you know like brown eyed girl like really yep i'm yep. not doing it i'm just not doing it and that's for someone else to do like i i did solo acoustic for years and i did all that stuff but like now i you know i I have my computer and, uh, you know, I do all the background tracks myself, the keys, the drums, the guitars, all the harmonies. And, uh, it's just so much of a more fun vibe. Like it's kind of 
like a, a, a full band experience. You know what I mean? It's not just a guy and a guitar. Yeah, absolutely. And do you bring that, what you were just describing to Rochester? I know we were talking before we started recording that you've played at like Pineapple Jacks and that, do you do that show there? Oh yeah. And uh, I got my computer, got my guitar, my little stool, my microphone, and I just play a bunch of stuff. People sing along and uh, drink and, you know, fall on the floor and, and laugh and, you know, that's kind of it. And it's, it's a blast, man. It really is. That's excellent. I hope to catch one of those shows sometime. That sounds like a lot of fun. Where are you at right now? Um, I'm in Buffalo. Well, you know what you should do? You should uh, find me a little dive bar that I can play in Buffalo, and then I'll just I'll come out the next night. And, uh, you know, I could book a show in Rochester on a Friday, then uh, play Buffalo on a Saturday. You know, if you got anything in mind, we can talk after if you want. But Yeah, uh, absolutely. I'm, I can do that. Yeah, since I'm already there, like sometimes I'll play like in Binghamton on the way home. It's on my way back to Philadelphia where I live. Mm-hmm. So if you know, some I'll try to stay out if I can. Um, if you have uh, if you have any ideas, you know, we'll talk about it. Yeah, absolutely. After after we're done recording here, we'll uh, you know shoot some ideas back and forth. No, yeah, that'd be great. Thanks. Cool. Cool. Uh, staying on the topic of Rochester, is it true that you used to give guitar lessons at the House of Guitars? Yeah, uh, like if anybody is um listening to this from rochester that they totally understand because like they were it was the top thing you could do in rochester it was like the house of guitars was the biggest most fashionable um music mecca of the city like that's where you know when you were a band in the 80s growing up like you know you put your flyers up there you go there to hang out you know you get your guitar lessons there you go to get all your music and they were a record label as well so i just knew that like well to to succeed in this business i know i have to work there and i have to befriend those people and try to make colleagues out of the other guys that work there who i you know i idolized them because they were just they were the top dudes you know, yeah, yeah. like the top band in the city at the time, like two of the guys worked there and, uh, you know, they were a record label and I just knew I had to work there. So what happened was I used to skip my high school was right down the street. So I would, I ended up skipping school all the time and I would just walk to house guitars and just sit there all day and play all these guitars, you know? So, you know, th- those guys got to know me, but, uh, what happened was, is I got a job there when I was like 17 and I ended up quitting high school and working there full time. And I was teaching guitar, you know, I was kind of like that little whiz kid guitar player guy at the time. Not so much anymore. I kind of, you know, gave up that whole, I want to be Ingve stage. You know, that was a, <laughs> but that, that's what I wanted at the time, you know? Um, then when I met, you know, I heard of Kurt Cobain and Nirvana, I just stopped trying to do that. I just wanted to focus on being a songwriter, but yeah, like house guitars was, I knew that was my first stop that I had to go there, work there, and just uh, be a part of that scene. How old were you when you actually started playing in your first band then? Um, I was probably like 15. Okay. And those were the days where, like, me and my, it was my brother, he was a year younger than me. And uh, so I was probably 16, he was 15. But we would open up for, you know, all the big bands that would play, like the Penny Arcade and stuff like that, you know, because I had the in from the House Guitars. Yeah. And, uh, you know... We were playing shows by ourselves back then as well. We were doing pretty good as kids. And uh, so, you know, that we would play, open the show, and then we'd have to pack up our gear and they'd, they'd escort us out of the building because we were too young to to be in there. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, so we'd play the show. We could never watch the other band after. It was like Dirty Looks was one of my faves. They're from York, Pennsylvania. And they're like, you know, they got signed out of the Penny Arcade. Like, uh, it was 1987 or 86 or something like that. I was at the show. They got signed. I snuck in and... So I just idolized all that, that whole scene. Um, but you know, nothing but good memories then. Greg Sullivan really gave me a chance. It was the first time I, I, he was the owner of the arcade back then. And, uh, like he, that was the first experience where I, I sent a demo tape into him. Oh, and wow. yeah. And like, I was like, I really want to play here. I know we're young, but you know, here's my demo. And, and dude, he loved it. He was like, okay. He's like, how about March 29th? And I was like, wait, you're going to, you want us to play there? <laughs> you know, I was like, it, it, but that was the first time I ever felt the joy of like being, uh, just accepted. Like, wow, this is, this is my band. And he was like, yeah, sounds great, dude. Love your stuff. So, you know, let's book a date. You know, that was, that was an amazing moment. Still remember it. 
That is wild. And, you know, I haven't heard the name Penny Arcade in so long. Yeah. I, I, I played there. I opened up for Wednesday 13 there. And, ah, my buddies. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, Jack's a really good friend of mine. Yeah, I like Jack. He's a great guy. All those guys in that band are – I just did the whole world with that whole with, – with their band. You know, I caught that tour in London, Ontario – because everywhere I tried to see it was sold out, and that's the first place. I drove three hours to see you guys there, and my main thing was I've never gotten to see Dope live. And I was like, we're not missing this tour. And I love Wednesday, I love Raven Black, but I was like, I've seen them already. I need to see Dope, and I went all the way to London for it. <laughs> nice. I can't remember the venue there. Is it, is it like a little theater? Yeah, yep. It had the balcony and yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a cool place. I remember that. Yeah, that was a great tour. Great lineup. A lot of fun. Everybody gets along great. Us, the Static Guys, and uh, Wednesday, of course. Uh, you know, what a great tour that was. And we did the whole world last year. Uh, oh. In 2019, rather. Yeah, yeah. And that was huge news. I remember hearing that that tour was taking place, and it was like, holy shit. Yeah, you definitely got your your money's worth. You oh, know my what God, I mean? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, it was a good one. So how do you end up actually um, playing with Dope? Because you joined in 2000, right? Yeah, it's uh, 21 years, dude. Wow. Isn't that insane? Yeah. I just spent the week uh, with Edsel in LA. I just got back last night because mm-hmm. uh, you know, we're working on a record for 2021. So you know, we've been tossing files back and forth. and uh, But you can't finish a record like that. You have to, you know, we have to go there and pass the guitar around and just me and him sitting there going, Hey, well, what about this for this one part? And then, you know, I'll sing some stuff. He sings. And then we just start, you know, putting the songs together in their final stages. So I just did that for a week. That was pretty good. But, um, I auditioned for dope and yeah, 20, I mean, in 2000, cause I knew the drummer and the guitar player. And, uh, so when they needed a guy, they called me like, they're like, Hey man, we're auditioning. We need a, we need a bass player. So, you know, right then I knew I was like, I'm, I'm going to get this gig. I, I knew it was like the next step for me. So, uh, you know, obviously I got the gig and I've been there ever since, but you know, it, it was, you know, it was tough at first. It was, it was music that I really wasn't exactly totally into, Oh, okay. but you know, I did hang out and put in the time and then, you know, I end up, you know, I co-write the records with Edsel and, uh, you know, I like, I, I, I'm at a good position now but you know i had to work my way up and uh i don't know that was like i have nothing i have no bad memories or uh no regrets at all like just uh like that band i know uh it's it's not the biggest band out there but you know we get a lot of respect wherever we go because everybody knows who we are we've been around forever and people just like this band and it makes me proud so good experience all around, still in the band. And, uh, you know, we had a great week this week. We just talk about old shit, you know, like, you know, everybody's married and has kids and stuff. So it's more about, you know, hey, how the, you know, I hung out with his daughter all week, you know? <laughs> so like, you know, just stuff like that. It's like you hang in there long enough and then, you know, you're, you're, you're old men at the end if you hang in long enough and, you know, different things become important, you know, like kids and wives and, uh, Stuff like that. So yeah, it's just, yeah, yeah. It's great, man. It really is. That's awesome, man. So here's something I really need to know. Where did the name Virus come from? Well, you know, in Dope, everybody's got fake names, right? Everybody right. knows this. So <laughs> when I first got into the band, Edsel started calling me Cyrus, right? Mm-hmm. C-Y-R-U-S. And I was like, eh, whatever. And then, you know, other guys in the band and the crew, they would all be like, Cyrus the Virus, Cyrus the Virus, you know, from that movie that who's in that movie? Is it Nicolas Cage? Yeah, <laughs> right. Like he's the villain in that movie, right? What movie is that? I can't remember, but I know is exactly it, what is, you're talking about. Is it the one with the plane? It might be. It might be. Yeah. So that joke just kept happening, and then it ended up just being the virus. Oh. Okay. And then the, then it just kind of stuck, and then it was like. And then Edsel's like, dude, since you're virus now, dude, you got to have everything green. You got to be like green hair and like you know green guitars and just be kind of gross and i was like all right yeah so you know i had green dreads and green painted fingernails and green boots and green guitar yeah it was pretty crazy <laughs> you know? that's that's extra funny too because you were saying how you weren't like totally into it just <laughs> just yet yeah well then... i mean it just i wasn't like i definitely was into the lifestyle because you know like i was living in new york city at the time and like you know i had a big blonde mohawk with big black makeup the same makeup i wear now you mm-hmm. know i look like a freaking moron but that's just how I, that's just how i look but like you know i definitely was 
I live like a rock star always. I've dressed like this forever. So it, I was more or less not into like the industrial metal stuff that was was out at the time. It was late 90s. Yeah. I just wasn't like, man, yeah, this stuff's kind of cool, but like it just wasn't my thing. I just remember when it came out, I was like, ah, this isn't really my bag. So like my band that that moved from Rochester with my brother and uh, another set of brothers, John and Matt Farley, who were superb musicians, man. Uh, when we moved to New York, I was like, man, like we were, I was like, I don't want to do this metal stuff. And we weren't, we were doing like, we we're an alternative rock band. So when I got the audition for Dope, I was like, oh my God, I got to go back to metal. <laughs> you know, like yeah. I remember thinking, I was like, well, all right. I guess, you know, I, I know I'm good at it, you know, yeah. not toot, not toot my own horn, like I, I, metal. I grew up on it. I've always played it. So I was like, obviously, you know, it's a good fit for me, but like just musically, it wasn't, you know, my first love, but, um, you know, definitely, you know, putting green dreadlocks in and uh, just doing all that stuff. Like, I, I really enjoyed all that. That's, that's really cool. That's yeah. awesome. Now, we talked about some of your acoustic stuff a little earlier, but you also released an album called Black and Blues, where it was like a darker take, but still acoustic. Where'd you get the idea for that? Me and my brother put together that project. Like, he's a fan of acoustic music as well. Mm -hmm. uh, he lives in Nashville. But like, he's my favorite singer. He always has been, still is. A uh, great guitar player, great songwriter. Uh, he has a studio down there in Nashville, if anybody wants to look him up. But we're always into the harmonies, um, acoustic guitar. And like, the only thing that we could ever find that we, that was doing what we were doing was Jar of Flies, Alice in Chains. Oh, okay. So we were like, dude, like, no one's really doing this. So, you know, we kind of, it was totally our vibe. Like I would, like we would market it after that. Like, dude, this is like Jar of Flies too. It's like mm -hmm. dark, creepy, moody, acoustic music. You know, it's full, full band. Um, if you want to check it out, you can look, um, you can find me on YouTube, Andre Virus Carcos and look at a song called The Sale that's out there, which is, you know, one of the, our best songs off the album. It's an EP, but you know, recently me and my brother have been talking about you know, coming up with like six or seven more songs and kind of re-releasing it. Cause everybody keeps asking me about it. People really gravitated towards it because I felt like there was a void. So I actually, I should call my brother today and tell him I was talking about this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'd love to do uh, some more tracks for that. Well, you, that one was, I know that it was labeled as volume one. So is there a volume two or is there a volume two coming? Is Yeah, we got, that's what I got to talk to him about. Like definitely we should do a volume two. But then instead of volume two, maybe um, putting both volumes together and just making it a full record um, just to kind of put it back out there because it's still pretty cool. Like I, I actually listened to it the other day and it's it's I think it's kind of timeless because it's acoustic. Right. Right. You know what I mean? Like there's the, you can listen to a lot of rock music and it's dated by the sounds. Yeah, I agree. You know what I mean? Like you can listen to eighties metal and you definitely know it's eighties metal. Yeah. <laughs> you know, or nineties metal, like smashing pumpkins and you know, that that kind of nineties rock. But this stuff is it's acoustic guitar, drums and bass and vocals. So it's like it could stand the the test of time. Yeah. So yeah, I gotta see uh what he says. I think that's something uh, we should toss around the idea and see if it's something we're gonna do. Awesome. Very cool. So, you, you know, you're just a songwriter. You you love music and it's, you know, pretty evident already by what we've already talked about. And you've also produced a lot of music for other artists. So was that something that you always set out to do or did that just kind of fall into your lap? Well, I'm, I'm very much like an engine guy. And what I mean by that is like, you know, I'm always doing the stuff that what has to be done in the band. Like I was... You know, I only became a songwriter because it had to be done. Like, well, it's like someone has to write the song. So I started writing songs and then I started, you know, making my own demos. And I always had a studio in my house. Like mm -hmm. I was I was really early on, I, I learned how to record myself. So I learned how to do it in an early age. And whenever I was at a recording studio, I would always be like, man, I got to get this guy out of here. I got to be sitting behind the board there. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was kind of like that guy. So... Yeah. <laughs> So I did that, and um, in the early 90s, I produced my first, like, real record with a budget and stuff like that. And okay. it was it was the first time the artist went to me and said, I think that what you do is pretty amazing, and I, I want you to produce my record because I think that you do a really good job. And I didn't really know how to, how to do it, like how to 
manage stuff, like manage money, manage people in the studio. Like I didn't really know how to do it. So I just kind of, you know, that, that fell into it, but I had to learn. So, um, I did that. I produced like three or four records in the nineties. Um, and I actually get to co-produce some dope stuff, which is cool. That, yeah, but, that's awesome. But yeah, like I enjoy taking ideas from other people and going, Hey, why don't you try this? Or dude, I'm like, give me the microphone. I, I got a harmony for this. Now add the harmony and they go, Oh wow. I never thought of that. That's really cool. Or I'll go, dude, you know what we got to do? We got to lose this third verse and we got to go right to a bridge and then we'll do choruses. Then we'll be done. Like just stuff like that. I, I, I became pretty, pretty good at. And, uh, but it took someone to believe in me, you know, to, to give me the shot. Yeah. And, and who, who was that, if you don't mind? If I don't know if you wanted to drop the name. Oh no, no. Her name. Her name is Lisa Saint Anne. And she was a New York City artist, and it was it was called Triple A. It's like adult contemporary stuff at the time. So I wanted to make her into the new Carly Simon. Oh, okay. Or Carol King. I was mm-hmm. like that. So that's I started listening to a bunch of those records, and it's music that I love. So I kind of knew it, anyways. But you know, I just. Just, uh, took all her, and I co-wrote a bunch of those songs. In fact, she, she took a couple of my songs that I had written, you know, pop songs, and I, uh, adapted them for her, but, uh, that's, she, she gave me a chance. I swear. You know what I mean? You and AC Slade just play with everybody. Like, that's just so wild that to think that you guys are just out there at all times, just jamming, and you're writing and producing, and just always on the go. Yeah, uh, I mean, because you have to determine, like, what you're really doing. Like, you can be a band guy and have your band, and you could put everything you got into your band. Mm -hmm. And if your band doesn't go anywhere, and okay, that's cool. If that's what you want to do. I just wasn't about that. Like, I had my band, and of course, I wanted to, to make that the biggest band on the planet. Of course, that was my dream. But, you know, I knew I had to play with other people to get more experience and just have more opportunities because... I wanted to do this for a living. So I wanted to be a guy for hire. And uh, when I got, so I learned how to be a side man, it's called, you know? Yeah, yeah. So I was a side man for her and um, and for other people that would hire me. Um, and I just started playing bass in another band. Then I would start singing lead vocal and then this other band. And just to kind of be out there, uh, to get my name out there. And with being in dope, you know, I got to admit that was hard for me because I've always been the guy. You know, oh, okay. I was like, yeah. you know what I mean? So mm-hmm. like, this was not my band. It's Edsel's band. It's Edsel's record deal. You know, mm-hmm. they were, they, he was on Epic Records. Like it, this is his thing. So I had to learn to be like a Richie Sambora. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Which, which I love too. Like there's, there's benefits in that. It's like, oh, you mean I'm not responsible for all this other stuff that has to be done to make the band successful? You mean I could just kind of be a great songwriter and co-write with the singer and, and play guitar and bass and, you know, and co-produce like, Oh, like that's what I have to do. And just kind of be a, uh, a good team player. I, I enjoy it. You know, like I've gotten to do that with Eddie money, like John Popper, uh, just, I, I enjoy it. I, I do. Cause I like making people happy. Like when I'm talking to Eddie money, I'm like, Eddie, so like, do you want to start the song like this? He's like, oh, that's a really good idea. Let's try that. You know, so, you know, I, I just, I enjoy that. And then I love that he's the focal point. I'm playing guitar, singing harmonies, and it's his show. And it's my job to make sure the show works, sounds good. And I don't fuck up, obviously, because it's, <laughs> li- it's live TV. Yeah, you know? right. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it, that, that's a skill in itself, you know, doing that stuff. So, well, let's kind of dig into some of those, those other things that you've done since joining Dope. Cause I know in 2011, you joined Lords of Acid. So how did that start coming around? I knew their manager and he's a dope fan. Oh, okay. And uh, he's in Denver. So one day he calls me up. He's like, dude, like we're going to do another Lords of Acid tour in about five or six months from now. He's like, I want to hire you to do it. I'm like, well, dude, I'm free. So I did all that. Um, and that was great because that was a cool gig because it wasn't guitar based. Cause I love, I love pop music. Like, yeah. uh, I don't know if you know, but I auditioned for Lady Gaga, Rihanna. Like those are my, those are the gigs that I, I love and really want. Really? Yo, oh, yeah. Like just, uh, I had to find a creative way to play guitar in Lords of Vassal. Like obviously there's electric guitar in it, but like a lot of it's techno and, uh, you know, that it's a- electronic. So I had to, you know, figure out cool guitar parts to play that didn't like ruin the song 
Yeah. That only that, but enhanced the song. So, um, but Maurice, like, uh, you know, Praga, he was, he kind of never said anything, you know, unless I did something he didn't like, he'd be like, Hey, virus, can you, you know, that part there, can you just, I'll be like, yeah, absolutely. You know, what do you want me to do? He's like, you know, can you do a little bit more of this? And I'll be like, yeah. And then, you know, you make notes and come to rehearsal the next day and, uh, run through it again. That's a good example. Like just, I'm, I'm there to, to support him. Yeah. And, and make the band sound good. That's basically the job. So aside from pop music, though, uh, now correct me if I have any of this stuff wrong that I'm about to say, but you played country music as well with Big and Rich, and you debuted at Country Thunder, which is a huge country music festival. Is that also true? Yeah, that's, uh, I believe it's the biggest country music festival in America, I believe. Wow. Yeah, so uh, I got an audition for that gig because the manager I had at the time was had a, uh, a management company with John Rich. Mm-hmm. And so they had all these country artists and pop artists and stuff. And, uh, so I, so my, my manager, Charlie, he's like, Hey, dude, I, I got this record. It's one of their artists. And he's like, dude, we're putting out this record. He's like, do you want, I, I need someone to cut these, these, uh, guitar parts. He's like, you interested? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, send over the, the stems and, uh, I'll just, he's like, yeah, just kind of duplicate what's there and feel free to add in some more stuff. So I did that. And, uh, sent back the tracks and like a week later. So, uh, John Rich and Charlie are listening to, it's Bradley, uh, Gaskin. He's a great, great country, uh, guy. Mm-hmm. Um, so they're like in the studio listening to the tracks. And, uh, so John's like, so who the fuck's playing guitar on this? <laughs> and, and, Char- and Charlie starts laughing. He's like, dude, it's fires. He's like, he's like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> yeah. That's, that's what he said. And, uh, so that's when he knew that I could, you know, play that stuff and um and by all means i'm not saying i'm a great country guitar player because i am not i definitely am not i can do you know the taylor swifts and uh like that's all the new country stuff but like for me to go down to nashville and 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 sit in and play with those freaking guys that play through clean amps or playing all this sick guitar stuff like i that's not what i do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I, you know, don't get me wrong. Like when I got the, you know, I got the, uh, the gig with them, you know, I had to brush up and like really hunker down on some traditional country licks and just kind of get into the vibe. I had to do a lot of work for that. But, um, but yeah, uh, so what I did was they needed a guy. So I just created like a big and rich medley, like about four tunes and I cut it up in Pro Tools and I made like this MP3 where all the, the songs, you know, they flowed together and I just set up a video camera. And, uh, you know, put on my cowboy hat like I do anyways, you yeah, know, right. <laughs> I, 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 but, uh, and, and those guys are weird. So they, you know, I've met John several times before that. And like, you know, I'm weird, you know, I'm like this, <laughs> like this gothic cowboy guy. Right. <laughs> so, um, so I put this video and then Charlie gives it to John. So him and uh, John Rich and Kenny, uh, are looking at it and they're like, dude, we got to fly this guy down here. So I fly down there. I vibe out and, uh. I, uh, I get the gig. And, uh, so that was my first gig. I, I flew to Nashville on a Thursday. We had rehearsal on a Friday, one rehearsal. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and, uh, and then Saturday we flew to Phoenix out, out in the desert there and just did the show. It was like, wow. you know, we're, head, we're headlining this festival on a Saturday night headliners and just, I don't know. I walk out there. It's like, 85,000 people in the desert, man, the wind blowing. I'm like, holy shit, man. Woo. <laughs> I'm like, this is crazy. You know, <laughs> after one rehearsal. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I mean, yeah. I mean, I do a lot of work at home cause you have to. And like, these guys are pros. Like these guys don't, these guys have been playing together for years. Like what do they want to do a week's full of rehearsals just for this new guy? Like that's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, and, and, and everybody there, like these are the top people. So it's just like, you know, before the gig, they're like, you know, the only thing you really have to talk about is like, okay, so what we do here is just, we're going to, you know, we just let John and Kenny go and we extend the song and just follow them and they'll cue you, you know? And mm-hmm. then we talk about, okay, so harmony wise. So like, can I just, why don't you be the guy in the middle? Megan Mullins on, on violin. She'll do all the high stuff and I'll sing the low part, but you handle all the stuff in the middle. So I go, okay, cool. And we kind of go over a couple of vocals and then that's it. Then you get on the plane. Wow. That's you know amazing. What I mean? Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, we yeah. keep talking about Nashville too, and my, my cousin's a country singer in Nashville, and now I'm wondering if he knows your brother. So we're going to have to try and find that out. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Danielle Carcos, and he's fantastic. Underdog Studios, Nashville. 
Yeah, he, he works with a bunch of folks down there, and uh, he's got a lot of great gear, and he's super uber talented. So, uh, yeah, have him look him up. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, after everything we've talked about so far, you're so, like, well-rounded with music. I feel like the only thing you haven't done yet is release a Christmas album. <laughs> you you want to know something, dude? I hate Christmas music, man. <laughs> I could walk into Target, you know, December 1st, and just to get some creamer for my coffee, and they're playing jingle bells. I just want to puke, man. <laughs> I des- I fucking despise it, man. It's just so <laughs> awful. It's awful music. Some of it's like, you know, obviously it's well-written stuff. Some of it, you know, like I dig, there's a couple songs I really love. Like mm-hmm. I love White Christmas. Like that's an interesting song, the way it's rent- written. It's, uh, it's chromatic notes. Like I don't want to get all music crazy with you, but like it's just some of that stuff's pretty awesome. But I just hate. I just, I more or less hate this stuff. <laughs> so we're never going to see a Christmas oh, that's, virus that's not, album. <laughs> no, that's not happening. You know what's funny though? You'd be surprised what I'll do for money. I've done some weird <laughs> fucked up shit musically for money because that's, that's what I do for a living. So, yeah. you know, if you hired me, yeah. And, and I, t- and I tell you, like, it would be good because I don't like to, you know, I always try to make sure what I do is, is, is good. And I, I just, I can't half ass anything. I just can't do that. It's not my nature. I mean, a very virus Christmas sounds really catchy. Oh yeah, like <laughs> wait, like green snow. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, right, about? right. <laughs> you know, so like never say never. But uh, yeah, if you know anybody that needs that done, I'll be happy to do it though. All right, you. I mean, you heard it here. <laughs> it's out there now. You yeah, can't take it, it back. <laughs> I won't take it back. I promise. <laughs> you know, you've been a busy guy though too, because we just talked about all these other projects that you did. But you were you also you mentioned earlier device, and then. Um, Eve to Adam, like, how did you just, how did you find the time to like do all of this? It just seemed like you always had so many projects happening one after another. Yeah. I mean, th- that time that was probably around, it's like what happened was dope slowed down a lot. Oh, okay. And, uh, Edsel went to work for this company where he was like music supervisor and uh, he was doing all this crazy stuff, like all this commercial stuff. And, you know, like we wrote a song for the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, you know, he brought me into that stuff as well. But he did a lot of amazing, amazing work for this company. So Dope was kind of, you know, we'd, we'd still tour, but it would just be like this. It would be like we do like a two week run. Then we'd come back. So Dope was like really slowed down. So, you know, I did Device 2013. Big and Rich was before that. Uh, that Eve to Adam thing, all this was done by, uh, by managers, you know, like, uh, Eve to Adam, like their tour manager. It's like, Hey, th- these guys need a guy. He's like, you interested in doing this gig? I'm like, well, when's the tour? Cause I, you have to be free. Right. Yeah. Cause you know, like all of us musician guys, we got our calendar on a computer <laughs> and it's like, Hey dude, like the, the, the run goes from, you know, June 1st to August 1st. Are you free? And I'm like, dude, actually I am free. I am free. I just have to move like, well, I got a couple solo gigs, but I could just move those. So if you're, you know, if I'm free, you know, I'll be happy to do it. And that's kind of what happened with the Eve Adam thing. And okay. then uh, what I, like the device thing was a really exciting thing because the record was done. So then David uh, Draymond needed to tour on it, obviously, because, you know, he, he was he's on Warner Brothers Records. So this device was, the record was released on Warner Brothers. So he's like, well, I got to put a band together. So. I think, yeah, he, Will Hunt from Evanescence, really good and close friend of mine, just got the gig. And so Dave was like, well, who should we get to play guitar? And Will was like, well, we got to get Virus to do it. He's perfect for this. And David was like, oh yeah, you know what? I just saw him. I think I, it was, I, I saw David somewhere in Chicago on, uh, on the lake, like him and his wife now, they were dating back then. So they're walking along and it was me and my, uh, my girlfriend at the time and my stepdaughters and, uh, so I'm like, Dave, what's up, buddy? So we end up talking and shooting the shit. So when Will was like, hey, we got to get virus, Dave was like, yeah, that, that sounds like a good idea. So we started talking and um, that was a lot of work because we had to build that thing from the ground up. Like we had to, you know, I had to hire a guy to, you know, make the computer rigs. It was an industrial band. So we had to play the track. We had no bass player. He had to put the bass on track. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So I hired a good friend of mine. His name's Eric Morris. He, he built like, um, he built the Lady Gaga live rig. Oh, wow. Okay. And actually, he's, he's, see how all this is, shit's connected. It's kind of funny. Like, he's the one that got me the audition for Lady Gaga. Okay. So, like, all this shit's interconnected. So, like, the device thing, um, a lot of work. 
But that was exciting again because I, I was back in a band on a major label again. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. you know, obviously dope, you know, we were on Epic Records for a couple records and then we, you know, now, now we're on E1 Entertainment, you know, mm-hmm. which is like the, the, the biggest, uh, independent. But, um, so all this stuff's connected. Um, but that device thing was really cool because it was, it was really exciting. Um, got to play with Will, who I, who I love. I, he's one of my favorite drummers and, and obviously playing with, you know, David. He's a, he's a fucking superstar in yeah. that genre, you know? Mm-hmm. So it was, it was, that was a really good experience. Uh, I wish it went longer, but obviously you got to put disturb back together, yeah. which, <laughs> you know, which like, what am I going to, what am I going to say? Oh, don't, don't do that. That's a bad move. You know, that's, yeah, right. <laughs> obviously like I get it, you know, like I would too. like that. That's a huge, huge band. So that's, you know, so that's why that ended. But that was just, uh, that was a great experience altogether. Awesome. Band. Awesome. So, yeah. you know, getting back on when you're um, on tour with Dope, who are some of your favorite bands to be on tour with when you guys are out on the road? Well, what we've learned is, and most people don't know this, but let me, um, it, it's really about who do you like as a person? Okay. Like, who can I see every day that I like? So you get older and you get smarter about, like, people in your own band, right? Like, like I know the guys in our band now. Like, if we get along, we all respect each other. And, you know, you're living on an apartment with wheels for months. So, like, you can get the best drummer out there, but, like, is he a dick? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, does he leave his dirty <laughs> socks everywhere? Or is he a slob? Does he, like, not pick up does he like cook something in a microwave on the bus and it blows up inside he doesn't clean it up like is <laughs> like like I, we just have no tolerance for that you, you get too old for that shit like you just want to be able to get along watch the same movies laugh have a good time so you know that's what it comes down to is like personnel and relationships so like bands touring with like i love playing with bands that i get along with that like oh hey man want to grab a cup of coffee yeah right. sound, sound checks not till four hey let's just, hey you want to go into you know we're in germany you want to you want to go into frankfurt and just kind of hang out and like yeah you know so you, like those kind of uh relationships become important as you've been doing this for a while you know before like you want oh we got to get this drummer he's look at this guy He's, yeah. <laughs> fuck, he's fucking ridiculous, man. He's awesome. But like, you know, you don't, you don't really, you kind of blow off the factor of like, well, I'm going to be in a steel tube with wheels with this guy for nine months mm-hmm. next year. Like you kind of, you know, it's funny how it flip flops, you know? And like, I've, I've gained gigs and lost gigs because of it. Like, uh, like Enrique Iglesias, you know, like it was between me and this other guy and yeah. they just, they just vibed with the other guy better. And I was like, yeah, okay. Yeah, I get it. Like I, you can't, I don't get mad at that. Cause I understand like those guys are older and they understand mm-hmm. how it works. Like we, we we're going to go with this guy, you know? Okay. You know, that's kind of how it works. In, in a different aspect of touring, is there a band that you would like to tour with that you haven't got a chance to? Yeah. I wish I could tour with. Just somewhat like a band that I grew up um, idolizing. Like a Motley Crue or? Yeah, it's funny you say Motley Crue because like, you know what? It's like going back to what I said before. Like I've hung out with Nicky. And he's, he's probably one of my top five idols. Like that's the, one of the reasons why I, I look like this. I'm like, <laughs> I want to. I, I saw that Looks at Kill video and I was like, I want to look like that. I want all those chicks in that video like they have. I want to play that kind of music. I want my hair to look just like that guy. So it's like, you know, I would love to tour with them and hang out with Nikki all day and just like go. So dude, like tell me how you came up, came up with the words for such and such a song or like, dude, like where did you shoot that video? Or just cause it's really the stories that I've noticed is what you love about hanging out with some of these dudes. Like the, the last time I hung out with Nikki, like, um, it was with Device and mm-hmm. Motley Crue was headlining. So I walk into my dressing room during the day. I get off the bus. I go into the building. I go into the dressing room and there's Nikki hanging out with Will. So I end up, you know, talking with Nikki and we end up talking about like, he's talking about his, he, we just tell funny stories. He's talking about his kid. He's picking up his kid from school. This is hilarious. <laughs> and uh, so he's pick, it's Nikki picking up his kid. And I forgot which, who it was. It might have been like Decker or something like that or Gunner or whatever. So he's, so, and then the, this, this chick is waving, you know, <laughs> this chick's waving at the car. So Nick, Nikki's waving back. He's like, Oh, Hey, yeah, that's pretty cool. She must know the band. She must, you know, she must dig the band or whatever. 
And like his son goes, Dad, she's waving at me. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I go to chemistry with her, dude. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, you tell shit like that, you know, uh, just funny ass shit. But I would love to hang out and just hear stories, man. Yeah. Like, like that. Cause that's, cause you realize they're, they're your idols, but they're also your colleagues. So you just, you know, don't get me wrong. When I'm talking to Nikki Six, I'm dying inside. I yeah. am. I'm like, oh my God, it's fucking Nikki Six, dude. Yeah. And you know. I, I can totally relate to that too. Cause there's so many musicians or other wrestlers that I've been in locker rooms with or like done shows with that. I'm like, you don't even realize what you were to me when I was younger. Yes. And now I can't like fanboy out because like we're hanging out on the same show. So, but in my <laughs> head, I'm like, holy shit. But out loud, I'm just like, Hey man, what's up? <laughs> I, I said that to Tommy Lee, uh, when I met him though. Did you like, <laughs> yeah, like I don't know how it came around. But uh, he was hanging out at our studio. He got me really fucked up, by the way. <laughs> he was making me drink Kool-Aid uh, that was, like, spiked with, like, vodka and something else. Like, dude, like, that guy got me fucked up. <laughs> so maybe that was why. But I was like, dude, I just want to tell you, dude, like, I'm here because, you know, of your band. Like, I just, you know, you guys are my favorite band. He's like, oh, he's like, oh that's cool, bro. You know? Yeah, yeah. He like probably hears it all the time. Yeah. So for him, he's just like, sweet. Yeah. And he keeps it moving. But for you, that was, that's a big deal, you know? Yeah. Like, and I was, you know, that's what I really like about this job. It's like you get to see and meet some of the guys that you grew up listening to. Yeah. It's, it's pretty cool. Yeah. We can definitely connect on that. Cause like, yeah. even, even right now, like I told you when we started, I'm, I'm a huge fan of dope. So for me, like I had AC on a few, like a month ago and I got, oh, nice. I have you on and I'm like, this is, so cool. And AC's like a superb guy, dude. Oh, Just, yeah. uh, yeah. And like me and him from the beginning were always tight. And, you know, it's, it, and now when I see him, we just have a good time, uh, because he's a good friend. Mm -hmm. And again, it, that's what it comes down to. It comes down to like, do I really want to be around this person? Right. So like, like when we tour, you know, it's me, AC, Edsel, and we have Dan, who's been in the band forever. It's like, it's, it's, a, it's never weird. It's net, no one's a dick. We're all just trying to, to, to give a, the top product we can give to the fans and, um, you know, play well and just do the gig at the highest level we can and getting along as people is so important. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And on that note, uh, before I let you go, I want you to plug all of your social media as far as whatever you have Twitter, Instagram, dopes, uh, social media, anything that you got going on, where we can find your music, all of it, and just let everybody know where they can follow along. Yeah. Um, I have to use my real name and I can't just use virus like I used to, you know, because everybody's so. <laughs> You know, like, you know, I don't, well, I, I don't even know if they do that for safety reasons, like, or, or I don't know, but, uh, touchy subject. Yeah. So <laughs> Andre virus Carcos, I believe that's everything. My Facebook, my Instagram. When you go to my Instagram, check out my hashtag, not your typical acoustic show. Uh, follow that. I don't have a Twitter at the moment. I had to shut it down. I, I got to reopen that. But on YouTube, I'm, I'm Andre virus Carcos on there as well. And that's kind of it. Awesome. Very cool. Yeah, so dude. we're looking forward to a new dope record this year then? 2021 for new... Oh, uh, oh yeah. No, no, no. 2022. I'm sorry. 2022 for the new dope record. I keep thinking that it's not 2020. <laughs> yeah, I know I said that in the beginning of this this uh, this uh podcast, but yeah, um, 2022. This year, like we're all staying in, probably going to Russia though. Cool. But uh, yeah, 2022 for a release of that and everybody's going to be happy. It's pretty badass. We're pretty happy with it. Yeah, go to... um dope on, on facebook that's kind of where everything originates so if you need to uh, get in contact with us or just you want to see what we're doing check it out there cool and i'm gonna go ahead and plug the uh fuck tomorrow t-shirt that's on the dope website because it's yeah, badass so yeah i ordered mine and i'm urging all of the listeners to order theirs as well <laughs> yeah if you ever need shirts that have the word fuck on it i guarantee you <laughs> we'll make you happy because i don't know we're that band yeah. Absolutely. Well, thank you again, man. I appreciate this. Hey, man. The good questions. Uh, good hang. I, I appreciate you, and uh, uh, I, I thank you for the opportunity. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely, man. You have a good night. All right. Talk to you soon, buddy. How many times should I stop and believe in myself?
myself, I don't believe much in anything I see the love and the pain and the shame and the blame It don't amount up to anything Now I can rewind back to a time where I would do anything and pay any price And I can need time cause I'm starting to think that the promises ain't worth the sacrifice that All right, rockers, so that was Virus from Dope and from a million other things, and I really hope that you guys uh, enjoyed that interview as much as I did. It was a lot of fun, down-to-earth guy, and I'm sure we'll have him on again in the future. And when Dope is back on tour, we will drop those tour dates for you guys, so make sure you get your tickets and check them out. So for the All Bets Are Off podcast, I am Rockstar Robbie Vegas, and I will see you guys next week. The preceding presentation has been brought to you by the Gear Network.